We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Fred Egan from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah, that's sure. That's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every year. <laughs> every day, yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day, it's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's the same, same with this, you know, with Suzanne, um, luckily, right, I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you, she was, uh, she was ill. Luckily. So, we didn't, we didn't have to go out, so I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly he may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I remember, uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, it was, it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and, uh, you know, uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And, uh, I said, come on, come to the supermarket. She was like, no, I'm ill, you go. And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her. And, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's all right. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Um, you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, <laughs> she liked me and that. And, um... What did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> at least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear... wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. <laughs> it's like that... It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion. Does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even... Yeah, but I'd, I'd pick something smaller. Yeah. Or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth. I'd go, definitely not. <laughs> what? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's, that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs>
he's, he's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Does it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can... You can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right? So... <laughs> you would, how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why why are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because was because because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's there's loads of that. You only have to like like you know I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So. And they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. But what, but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right, what, what do you think it's like being a crab? If you, if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to, it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen but you're a slug and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, because what, what do you do? I'd, I'd hate that. I don't, that would be horrible, that. <laughs> oh, God. Have you ever read, uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis? Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the, yeah, that's the whole story. Uh... I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be reading it, don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does, like Ricky's saying, he finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him, you know, because he, he's a giant beetle. He becomes a freak, he becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a you'd giant- be sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around. And you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd, like, like in life, right, um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And, I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you, there is Whoa, a Whoa, hang on, what do you mean? What, how, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you treat- So you're, 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 all these, these beetles, they're scrubbing around, right, you're sort of like watching them, and there's, and then you realise that you want a mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right, 
what do they do? How do they get on? Whoa. It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad, because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? Think of something else. So, get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got, they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying though. Beetles are different because they do mm -hmm. tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh God. Okay, all right, another one. So there are sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay.